I'm your host, Natasha Paris, and I'm excited because you are in the building with me. You can be anywhere in the world, but you have chosen to be here with me, and I am so humbled and appreciative. Let me tell you about this show. Each and every single week, we continue to empower you to greatness that is truly going to help you, whether you are a person that have experienced a heartbreak, have gone through a divorce, or have endured levels of trauma of any kind, or you're just a person trying to rebuild their life and themselves, and now you are finally ready to live a life full of abundance, joy, and peace, then this show is for you. So with that said, thank you again for being here. I am extremely grateful. I'm excited to be on this journey with you because together we are empowered for greatness. You ready? Let's go. Hello, my friends, and welcome to episode eight. You are not your label. Oh, let's talk about it. You are not your label. But before we jump right into this, for those who don't know, I am your host, Natasha Paris, the empowerment strategist here to really empower you for greatness and help you unveil the things that are happening in your life so you can be the best version of yourself to not only yourself, but of course to God and your family and those who love you. And so let's jump into this episode. Episode eight, you are not your label. Let's talk about it and let's really have a heart to heart conversation. What I know for sure is that there's so many people walking around this country, this world with so many labels. They walk around with the Louis Vuitton label. They walk around with the Chanel label. And no, I am not discounting those labels. They have great products, great bags and perfume and all of that stuff. But oftentimes people walk around with their Gucci shoes and their, you know, Prada bags and things of that nature, expecting the label to be them when we know that those are just labels. But let's get a little deeper than that. You know, I am big on not being a label. Because what I find is that people get caught up in, I'm a divorced mom. I am a mom. I am a single person. I am a trauma victim. I'm a survivor. I can't sing. I am a baseball player. I am a dancer. But when we go further down and we go past the labels, but let me say this, I am not saying that you cannot say that you're a divorcee because I am. I'm not saying that you cannot say that you are a mother because I am. I cannot say that you are a black woman. Uh, I am too. But what I find is that people get caught up in the labels of who they are on the surface, but they don't, I'm going to say this, but they don't really live up to the label of who they are. And I don't even want to call it a label. I want to say, who are you? So there was this woman I always have these stories of people coming into my office and there was this woman that came into my office and she was decked out. I mean, she had the L shoes, you know, the L shoes, right? With the red bottoms. 
She had the designer bag. She had the designer glasses. And when she sat on the chair on my couch, she began to talk about how she was an attorney and that she couldn't understand that she was in this place of depression because she even said, look at me. Well, how could I be a depressed woman when I have all of the things that I want in my life? And I just sat there and I just listened and I shook my head and I confirmed that she was present. And the first question that I asked her was, who are you? She immediately had this perplexed look on her face. She said, I told you who I am. I'm an attorney and my name is, due to confidentiality, I will not share. And she continued to talk about how she was able to rise to the top and she really worked hard to get there. And she had been dealing with levels of depression and she couldn't understand why. And again, I asked, who are you? As you can see, my friends, there are people who live either consciously or unconsciously by their label. What are the effects of living on that surface, on that surface of your label? Well, the first thing is, is that living on the surface prevents you from knowing who you really are. So let me be honest, when I talk about living either unconsciously or consciously by your label, there are people who unconsciously don't know who they really are. They don't know beyond the label. They don't know beyond their career title. They don't know who they really are beyond the trauma that they've endured, right? But then the people who are in that category of consciously knowing, it's only because, and I'm saying this from my experience as a licensed clinician, is that they rather be this label rather than the person they believe they are. They may be that insecure person. They may be that envious person. Or they just don't like themselves and they rather cover it up with a label. The second is that person who lives by their labels chooses to live in the past. Now, these are all my friends for those who are conscious of it, but then also those who are unconscious, okay? Because living in the past is more comfortable. Living in the past and wearing your cloak of defense or that clothing of armor or that mask, right? That mask that we see oftentimes that people wear, they wear it all day. And then when they come home or they go home, they are crying at night. They are looking in the mirror and seeing themselves for who they really are. And they don't like themselves. Third, if you continue to wear your labels on your sleeves and on your face, and I'm saying this figuratively, right? Not exactly like, of course, if you continue to wear the clothing, no. But if that goes before you first and not you, it also says that you're limiting yourself as well. You're ignoring who you really could be or want to be. And you either might be fearful of what that real person looks like. It's just easy to hide behind the surface of a label. Okay, my friends, here are some suggestions that you can do starting today. You know what I say? I say, get it started today rather than wait. Okay, so the first thing is, let's do some self-reflecting. Take time to reflect on your own values and the things that you enjoy, your interests, your own beliefs. 
Understand what truly matters to you at your core. And I say, in order to find that out, write it down. Ask yourself a question on paper. What do you want? What do you want? Okay. And answer the question. And when you answer the question, you'll be so surprised, my friends, that you will be able to say, oh, wow, I forgot about the fact that I wanted this. Or my goodness, this is confirmation. Like I've been thinking about it. And for me to write it down, I need to just go ahead and do it. So self-reflection can help you move beyond the surface level labels and discover your authentic self, my friends. The second is embrace growth and change. Recognize that people evolve and change over time. Okay, my friends, allow yourself the freedom to explore different aspects of your identity without feeling confined to any particular label. So what does that mean when I say, allow yourself the freedom to explore different aspects of your identity? That means that really, if you love playing soccer and you've always wanted to play soccer, but you never had an opportunity to do so, That is something that's part of your identity as well, because your identity is not one layered, it's multi-layered because we are not just our labels. We are so much more. And if you have difficulty learning who you are, as I said, embrace growth and change. Embrace personal growth so you can be open to new experiences allow yourself the freedom to explore different aspects of your identity. Like I said, write it down, write down the things that you've always wanted to do. Okay, my friends, in addition to that, it is so important. It is so important for you to be comfortable with the things that you enjoy doing. Okay. And without feeling confined to any particular label. Because this is the thing, you know, as African-Americans, um, I'm African-American, actually, I'm African, um, Haitian American. And, you know, there's the stigma that's attached to being a West Indian, right? Oh, you know, you love spicy food, right? But I used to like spicy food, but I don't like it as much because my friends, I have acid reflux. So I had to curtail my taste buds. And so I fell in love with Mediterranean food. I really did. And I really love it. It's fresh to me. Um, it's, it definitely has some spice. I mean, I'm being really, you know, basic about this, but it gives the example of the fact that I didn't have to stick to the label of being a West West Indian, only loving spicy food. I decided to explore different options as it related to food and different things that I can enjoy that worked well with my digestion, that helped my cholesterol levels, right? And taste good, right? So I didn't want to be confined to that label, okay? And also, you know, just being a mom, I said this in my last episode, in episode six, when I talked about da 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 being your own superhero and really making sure for me that I gave myself self-care. And being a mother is that sometimes it's that stigma that's attached that you're supposed to look like a mother, which is equated to looking a bit haggard. <laughs> And for me, I put on a good makeup face and I wear my bikinis at the beach, you know, things of that nature. So I didn't want to be confined to that title of just mother. I wanted to be open and be open to challenges and experiences and new, new types of foods and, and skiing and doing all of those things that people may say, oh, wow, I didn't know that African-Americans ski. (laughs) which is crazy, right? Because there's a large community of African-Americans that ski. So my friends, that's my, my point. Number three, 
Practice self-acceptance, my friends. Practice self-acceptance. That in itself is super important. Embrace your unique qualities, regardless of societal expectation, right? It's important for individuals, and I know for me, my my quality, unique quality is I love to wear different types of clothing, right? Like I'm not confined to a label. I love going to the flea markets. I love going to small boutiques and purchasing different outfits that no one would imagine that I would wear, but that's just who I am, right? Um, In addition to that, accepting and loving yourself, my friends, as you are, as you are and not feeling that you have to be someone else. Because let me say this, my friends, in my practice, I've come across so many people wanting to be like everyone else or wanting acceptance so bad, right? We know those people pleasers wanting acceptance so bad that they forego what their feelings are. They forego what they want and what they desire so they can fit in. My friends, that is not it because you will not be happy. Again, like I said in the very beginning of this podcast, I said that oftentimes people wear these labels, these masks, okay, equal. They wear these masks hoping that it will satisfy them. But in the long run, they realize those masks are just masks and they're not living their authentic self, my friends, which allows you to move beyond the surface of labels. Find out who your authentic self, but I'm gonna give you some homework assignments. I don't call them homework assignments. I call them empowerment assignments. I call them empowerment assignments, okay? So let's go over all of this, okay? I gave you three points, there's several other points, but I wanted to talk about the empowerment assignments, okay? All right, so with that said, I want you, let's do a quick summarization. Let's summarize. What we know for sure is that living on the surface does not satisfy you. Living on the surface is really wearing a mask, expecting a level of peace and joy. You know what I say about joy. I'm always going to say this, right? If you have not listened to my podcast, Number one, the first one, the launch of my podcast, you need to go back to number one, where I talk about finding joy in the midst of difficulties, right? And I say that I prefer the word joy rather than the word happiness, my friends, rather than the word happiness, okay? And so what we know is that living on the surface does not satisfy you. It really does not, right? Um, I truly believe consciously and some people unconsciously that they do it on intentional or in unintentional, right? Because they either don't want to live in the past, or I should say they rather live in the past, right? They don't want to embrace the present, right? Or they just want to ignore who they really are. They want to ignore who they really are. Well, some people could be really ugly inside. So they believe that if they hide behind the Prada bag and the, you know, Givenchy, you know, perfume and the Louis Vuitton bag, which I have one and I love it, right? They hide behind it because they believe that they'll be more accepting or accepted by society based on what they have or based on who they call themselves, right? A mother, a wife, right? Come on now, right? So how do we get out of that? What are my recommendations? Self-reflection. I said to you, write down, start, you know, and and that's going into my my empowerment assignments. I'm going to tell you what those are in a minute, but self-reflection, self-reflecting on who you are, right? Or identifying who you are. Start asking yourself questions. Second, embrace growth and change. Be willing to change. Be willing to come out of that box of, of stereotypes. Be willing to, you know, go and explore new, um, new sports, new activities, new travel, new food, 
right? In addition, practice self-acceptance. You know what I say, and I've said it on several different occasions that it is so important, my friends, It is so important for you to give yourself grace. God offers us grace every day that we wake up. We have an opportunity to do something that we have not done. And we have an opportunity to let go of the past because the past cannot be changed, my friends. We have an opportunity because we woke up this morning. We woke up this day. Right. And you're listening to this podcast. So it speaks volume. So learn to accept yourself, practice self-acceptance. Right. And celebrate you while being your authentic self beyond surface level labels. Okay, so what is the empowerment assignment? I have two empowerment assignments. I hope you did the last one. I hope you did the last one. In addition, I hope you're enjoying the empowerment affirmation series. That's my new series. And we talked about worthiness, right? You are worthy. Okay. So the empowerment assignment, the first empowerment assignment is I want you to get a journal. Yes, my friends, get a journal. It can be a very fancy one or it can be one just from the dollar store, right? (laughs) Where it's a, you know, a composition black and white book and you can start writing to yourself, writing a letter to yourself, okay? I want you to do that. So the first thing is I want you to get a journal. The second thing is really simple. I want you to start writing. And actually, I'm going to add the third piece. The third piece, write a letter to yourself. Write a letter. And you can start by saying, dear Natasha, right? Oh, that's so powerful. Dear Tasha, dear Natasha Perez, dear David, dear Devin, dear Sayla, dear Renee. Yes, dear Renee. You have an opportunity to talk to yourself. You have an opportunity to do something amazing in your life. And you have to start by asking those questions about what it is that you want, what are the things that you want to change, and more importantly, who are you? Like I said to the woman that walked into my office on that cloudy day, dressed to the T, who was an attorney, who had all these accolades, but she really didn't know who she was. So my friends, my friends, my friends, remember moving past labels is a personal journey. It is not a journey that anyone else can take for you, my friends. It is a personal journey. It may take time to get to know who you are and to identify what you enjoy and to really go beyond the surface labels and identify who you are and be authentic with it. Okay, my friends, be authentic, but I want you to understand it is a process. In addition, be patient with yourself. Allow for growth and transformation. I'm going to say that again. Be patient with yourself, my friends, and allow for growth and transformation. Transformation means turning from being a caterpillar, going into that cocoon as you journal, and then coming out as a beautiful butterfly, flying to heights unknown that you've ever seen or have heard about for you. So my friends, if you enjoyed this podcast, episode eight, go to your favorite platform and hit that five star button and leave a review. And I want to know, have you done your homework or I should say your empowerment assignment? Because those are those opportunities to grow, doing the work. Because my friends, I am here to spread a message that you matter. I'm here to spread a message that mental health matters. I'm here to spread a message that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it. And so do I. All right, my friends, I love you. Be empowered for greatness. See you on the other side. Or I should say, see you on the other side of episode nine. Bye. 
If you are loving this content and our time together as we become empowered for greatness and you want to connect with me more, I would love for you to come and check out my self-empowerment scholars. It's my monthly empowerment sessions where we take all of the materials learned on the podcast and apply it and study it and take it to the next level. So join me over at Empower You, the letter U, to right? The number two dot com forward slash join, or you can text the word empower to 571-464-6511. That's text the word empower to 571-464-6511. Also, if you've ever gained an ounce of wisdom or the episode resonated with you, I simply ask that you do four things. The first is I want you to subscribe right now if you have not done so already. The second is I want you to hit that five star button on your favorite platform. The third is I want to hear from you. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear how it has resonated for you. In addition, the last, I want you to share this message with someone. It allows us to spread the message of empowerment to those who are desperately in need. So I look forward to seeing you on the next episode and I want you to be what? Empowered for greatness. See you soon.